Alongside Jesse Simonton, Rob Lewis, and Brent Hubbs, I'm Austin Price for the Rocky Top Roundtable. Guys, it's Florida week. Uh, let's just dive right in on the Gators. New quarterback, Kyle Trask. Um, you know, what do you feel like that he brings and, and where can Tennessee maybe have success and where will, you know, where could Trask potentially have success? Well, I think what Trask brings to the table is what Dan Mullen wants, a, in a lot of ways, what Dan Mullen wants a quarterback to do. Uh, I, I think, Rob, when you look at him, He's not as fast as Felipe Franks, but he's got more power. So I think his legs are a challenge for your defensive front. And he clearly came off the bench hot, ready to play against Kentucky. Yeah, I mean, what impressed me, and it is a small sample size, so you don't, I don't know how much you want to run into it, but just you know, decision making for a guy coming in cold like that. What was I think he was 9 of 12, 9 of 13 in the second. When he came in, 19 unanswered points to bring them back from behind. And just the, the presence he had, the way he managed the game, didn't, didn't force anything, didn't panic on the road when he came in, his team was behind. I, I was really impressed with, with what he saw, and I, I, I think it was pretty clear. I mean, Florida executed offensively better with him in the game than they, they did with Franks, at least on Saturday night. Jesse, when you look at, at you know what Florida wants to do offensively, they, they are pretty persistent in their willingness to want to run the football, even when they've not had success this year. Do you expect more of the same uh, Saturday at noon? Yeah, I mean, P. Ryan's a really good running back, and, and obviously they use those wide receivers on those jet motions, whether it was Hammond, who you saw kind of seal the game. Uh, against Kentucky, but Tyree Cleveland, um, even a guy like uh, the Ole Miss transfer, Van Jefferson, uh, you know, has some Tennessee ties there. You know, they, they give him the ball in space, kind of using some of those bubbles and jet motions. Dan, Dan Mullen told uh, Scheme is basically spread them out, run, 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 and then pop the big pass over the middle off play action hubs, and, and that's what they're going to test Tennessee's, you know, young linebackers with, with Toa Toa, uh, and then young corners with Warren Burrell. Well, and it starts up front for Tennessee. They've got to find a way to survive in the defensive trenches. Look, they're not going to stonewall Florida's run game. I know Florida's not running it real well, but this is a Tennessee defensive front and a defense that's given up 150 yards a game on the ground. Uh, Chattanooga had 150 yards last week. And there wasn't a big chunk hollow, you know, play at the end of the game type deal. So Tennessee's linebackers in that front have to, to, to do enough good things on early downs in the run game to try to get Florida into third and long situations. I think that's pivotal for Tennessee. Flip it to the other side. Florida secondary, while it has talent, there's some question marks there about health. You've obviously got the safety who's going to have to miss the first half of the game. Kentucky, you know, was able to throw up some of their bigger receivers. Can Tennessee do the same thing? I mean, I, I mean they hope. <laughs> I mean, I think it's got to be you know, kind of similar to what we saw at Auburn last year. Tennessee's going to move the football. I, mean, I don't think Tennessee's going to line it up and, and get four or five, six yards of carry. I mean, may, maybe I'm wrong, but with an offensive line that, you know, maybe found some answers last week, but I think we're a long way from saying that they've solved all their problems up front. I mean, I, I think you have to depend on Callaway, on Jawan, on, on Josh Palmer winning some one-on-one -on -one battles on, on the outside. Yeah, I mean, and the, the Jennings piece is going to be interesting because he's had almost all of his success in the middle of the middle field. Of the field so he's yeah. going to be going up against a guy like Trey Dean. What's been interesting about Florida this year is that Marco Wilson was, you know, one of the – it was Bryce Thompson and, and, and Alante versus Marco Wilson uh, and C.J. Henderson, you know, who had the better kind of young cornerback duo. He, he's kind of struggled coming back from his injury, though. If they get Henderson back, I think that obviously changes Florida secondary. Dan Mullen's been, you know, very uh, coy about whether or not he's going to play, but he's an All-American type talent. Also, obviously, I mean, Florida's pass rush hubs. I mean, that's going to be that could be the difference in the game. Even though they can get pressure with four, Grantham loves to blitz. Uh, the kid they got from Louisville has been really good. Uh, Grenard, he already has a couple sacks. Obviously, Zuniga's really good. And, and, and Vontrez Miller um, is another guy uh, who, who has a couple sacks and who's been good for them this year. Do, do we buy that, you know, Jared Garantano is back to himself, or would you feel like that was just a lot of, you know, try to, you know, try to say it into to, to existence? Well, I mean, I, I mean, he threw eight balls, and, and Art, you could argue two of them could have been intercepted. The first pass was woefully underthrown to start the game. Uh, and, and then the pass to Cedric Tillman was late, and, and a, sa a safety uh, of high caliber might have been over to get over to knock that ball away or, or to steal that one. The six in between, I thought he threw it in rhythm. I thought he felt pressure. I thought he did a lot of things well. I, I think this, this. Oh, that was a good throw. Yeah, I, no question. He stepped in and you know saw pressure, felt it, got out of the way early, made a play there. I, I think what's interesting and is going to be interesting in this game is what is Jim Cheney's counter to pressure. This, you know, you're paying Jim Cheney a ton of money. He knows what he's got in three games with Jared Garantano. 
He's got a young offensive line. So what's the counter? Is this a heavy screen game? Is it a draw game? Is it a fade jump ball type deal? What's Cheney's counter to Todd Grantham's pressure? I think that's a, a really interesting storyline of the game within the game, right? To me, that's what it all boils down to. I mean, Cheney's answer to pressure schematically and also just Tennessee's five offensive linemen. I mean, assuming they line up like they did last week, you're, you're starting two true freshmen and K. Ron Calvert it, my, almost is a true freshman. He's going to be making his first SEC start, first road start after playing last week. I mean, how do they handle movement? How do they handle communication in what is going to be a really hostile environment? It's not going to be like, like anything they've ever seen. Con confusion, knowing what to do when, when the defense starts moving around, that's what, if I'm Tennessee, that's what really concerns me. So to piggyback off that, Tennessee's facing the real true SEC top defensive line this week in Florida. Got some real guys that can, that can get after the quarterback. Not as good in the interior of the line, but really good off the edge. What's a successful afternoon for Tennessee's run game, let's say? Well, I just I think something on first down, you know, I think some first down first success, down? you know, that, that, look, first and second down, you got to mix it up. I, I think, Jesse, I think Jim Cheney said this in his media visit back in the spring, you're going to have to use the receivers more on early downs than probably in, in other years. So I don't think he can lean on the run game. He's got to run it enough to keep it honest and keep them honest. Tennessee's just got to avoid third and long. I, I, mean, I think they've got to find a way to stay out of third and long. If that means you, you flip it out to Ty Chandler and that's a quote run play, or you find a way to hit a couple things up the middle to, to, you know, to get three or four yards every now and then to keep them out of third and long situations, I think that's success in the run game as long as you're not in third and eight. Yeah, and I agree. You, know, you, you kind of alluded to the fact, is Tennessee going to dial up the screen game? That's not been something that, you know, that's been really in Cheney's repertoire the last few seasons, whether it's been at Georgia or the first three weeks here at Tennessee. So it'll be interesting if he kind of goes against tendency and, and does sprinkle in some of that. I think you're going to see more jet motion from Tennessee this week to kind of make uh, Florida's linebackers, including David Reese, who's really good, run sideline to sideline. So then maybe you pop one up the middle with an Eric Gray or Ty Chandler if you get one of those gaps, uh, you know, set up. So I, the, the chess match is going to be on full display at noon in the swamp. I th and I think quickly, I think the tight end play for Tennessee is uh, is paramount in terms of, of what Wood Anderson does, not only in the passing game, if they can get him involved and get him matched up the right way, but he and Pope in the run game and in pass protection with those edge guys to help out those tackles is going to be paramount for Tennessee. Yeah, Pope's been really good through three weeks, especially in, in the run game, in my opinion. And then I, I, think, I think Dom what had Jesse had a kind of one, one down game, but on the whole has been much better than a year ago. Uh, in pass protection and, and run blocking. Well, yeah, I mean, Saturday against Chattanooga was his best game of his career in terms of a run blocker. One other point, I think, in terms of pass pro that's going to be interesting, it's something that I think we'll see early. Tim Jordan got some run a week ago. He's Tennessee's best pass, pass protector as a running back. I, I think if Tennessee decides to go max protect, you're going to see a lot of number nine out there and not freshman Eric Gray or, or uh, Ty Chandler. I know that's a sore spot because you know, of the whole Jamal Lewis thing, you know, years ago. But that's, I mean, I think you could see kind of a repeat of that because Eric Gray has really struggled in that department to start, uh, you know, his college career, which is not unsurprising. He's a freshman. No doubt. I, I agree with that. Um, do you, Think Jim Cheney breaks out the wheel route. You know, it's always open. I, all I know is he better what, break. What in. wrinkle does he throw? You know, do you, well, do you, I think you're gonna. I, I think in this game you got to have a trick play. No doubt. Okay, we've you, not you seen got, one yet. Yeah, we haven't seen anything. So you got to have something up your sleeve that way. I think the other thing too is you just got to be in three step drops. You know, ball out of the hand. A lot of quick game stuff. Whether it's the slants, whether it's the face. I mean. Try to help your quarterback and that young offensive line out. Get it out of your hands quickly. Which they were working on Tuesday. And and pre and pre snap reads by the quarterback, going to be as important as it's ever been for him. A year ago, they couldn't figure out where anybody was coming from to start the football game, and it was over before it got started. If they're going to make this, to borrow your phrase, a 60-minute rock fight, which is how you're going to have to try to win this sure. game. That, that you better be able to recognize pre-snap and not allow what happened to you in the first quarter a year ago happen to you Saturday. And I can't believe you didn't mention it. Your favorite far weak point. If you're going to go three-step drop, you got to be able to be press coverage. Well, if look, you got to. if Callaway, who's proven that he can catch jump balls, and Jennings, who's proven it, if you're not playing that game with them, look, Kentucky showed you that blueprint a week ago. You better play that type of game against Florida. And, and that secondary who's been flagged a bunch and has had a hard time covering people through the first three games of the football season. What we just learned is Brent Hubbs thinks Tennessee's key to success, make it an Ernest T type game. <laughs> Throw the rocks. <laughs> Ford, go ahead, finish it out. I'm done. Go ahead. Let's roll. That's <laughs> Jesse, Jesse Simonton. Simonton. That's Rob Lewis. Lewis. It's Austin Price. I'm Brent Hubbs. That's the Rocky Top Round Table. <laughs>